It's great. Obviously, we've gone through a lot of work together here over the last seven or eight months, and to know all the, the things that have transpired behind the scenes, the work that they've put in with assembling the staff and, and getting the players back with the super senior group, the recruiting efforts that have been ongoing, to know that it's all built for this, right? This is why we do all that stuff, to have a chance to get out there and, and strap it on and go compete in the Big Ten starting here in, in just over a month. And, and so it's, it's exciting. It's, it's just another step in that progression and uh, this this event always to me kind of signals the start of college football and so it, it, it we know we're close now and, and we're looking forward to turning the lights on and seeing how it goes I think it's hugely important I, I think that that's the, the world we're in now is that we need to make sure we have a program that people embrace that they're excited about uh, I think that the more you can provide transparency and, and insight into the way your program is functioning, whether that's through the, the coaching staff or through the players, uh, that's that's critical. And, and obviously for the person who sits in the head coaching chair to, to be in a position to provide some of that perspective and some of that uh, insider look, I, I think is, is invaluable. Certainly we're going to do our part with our social media accounts and all the different folks that we have around the program. But uh, when your head coach is in a position to, to provide that, I think it just makes it that much more powerful. I told us that everybody's going to be vaccinated by the time training camp starts. I know you were proud of the numbers of, of a couple months ago when we talked to you, but what does that mean for the team, you know, that you're not kind of having to, to push people once, once camp gets going? I think it's huge. I think uh, certainly the pandemic is not over, and, and we all have seen here in recent weeks that the uptick in positive cases again and with the new variant that's that's spreading across the country. And so for us to be able to go onto the field with a level of confidence that we're going to hopefully, uh, and obviously there's always some breakthrough cases, but uh, be able to avoid disruption as a result of, of COVID-19 can give us, I, I think, a lot of confidence as, uh, as we hit the field. Josh Brett talked about the details that go into building the program up to success he had in the big time previously. How impressive you've been with him in those areas since he's been hired? Hugely impressed. I, I think that we all understand in sports it, it really is a process. You don't just go out there and kick it off on that first game and, and expect to have success. And so uh, I've been really uh, impressed with the methodical approach he has taken. He has a plan, and, and he's been executing on that plan since the first day he walked into the Smith Center. And, uh, and I, I really applaud him for that. And it's been very obvious to me who have had a chance to visit with him almost every day and, and to see how uh, strategically he has worked through the different parts of, of building a program and laying the foundation for what we think will be long-term success has, uh, has really been fulfilling for me to watch and, and just really proud of the progress we've made. Josh, <laughs> that's a big that's a big question with an even bigger answer I, I think that um, you know obviously the decision was made and, and, and the court I thought signaled some pretty strong things about what they thought was the the way that that the, the landscape would continue to evolve um, I think that we now as the caretakers of college athletics uh, certainly here at the Big Ten Conference being as prominent as we are in the in the overall landscape uh, we need to be proactive and we need to start looking at, at what this model will look like going forward and understanding that some of the things that we've long held on to as, as core beliefs I think they're still there um, but I, I think that there will be some necessary change and uh, we can either wait and react as those changes happen around us or we can try and be proactive and, and be leaders in the college space which I think this conference has always been and uh, I'm, I'm thrilled to be a part of the league and, and really uh, grateful every time I look around the room and see the other faces of the athletic directors, the conference staff. Uh, I, I think we're in good hands and, and looking forward to being a part of those conversations going forward. I think so. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think um, you know this is not going to be a, a quick change. There, there clearly is an evolution afoot in college athletics, and uh, we started to see some of those changes. NIL, obviously, and I've said this in, in other settings, is the biggest change to come since the creation of athletic scholarships. Uh, then the Alston case comes out like three days later, and it's like, well, uh, maybe now it's number two. I, I think, the, but I think the the NIL change was much more sudden. Uh, the Alston change will probably take a little more time to, to fully work its way into uh, some uh, form that, that we can all grasp and talk about. Josh, How does NIL vote, um, vote the NIL culture in How do you compete against the Michigans and the United States? 
I think any time there's disruption in a marketplace, and, and there's clearly been disruption on numerous fronts in college athletics right now, I think it provides entities, athletic programs, an opportunity to try and gain ground. Uh, and so we've really tried to be strategic in our approach around whether it's name, image, likeness, whether it's some of the early conversations we're having about Alston, about how can we as an athletic program best position ourselves to emerge from this period of uncertainty in a stronger position than when we went into it. Um, and and uh, I think NIL is just a great example of that. It's a chance for us to, to step forward and, and be on the front end of that effort. Uh, I actually feel like I, I know it's popular for people to say, well, name image likeness opportunities in bigger cities, if you're in Minneapolis or Columbus, those are going to be more robust. I tend to think a little bit differently. I, I think that in, when you're in a market like Champaign, with the proximity we have to Chicago. Uh, I think that our student athletes in our community are more recognizable, they're a bigger deal. Uh, it's kind of the, the big fish in a smaller pond concept. And uh, I've, I've been an athletic director in a big city. I was at Wash U in St. Louis and, uh, and it's a different vibe, right? St. Louis got a lot going on. There's a lot going on in those big towns and uh, in a place like Champaign, our athletic program is the focus. And, and so I, I think our student athletes will have a lot of opportunities and. Uh, we, we're looking forward to making that an advantage for our program as we move forward. Can I get your thoughts on having Barry Alvarez as what sounds like a sounding board for the highest revenue sport in your conference and, and what his position might be? You, you have experience bringing him as an AD colleague, but this is a, this is a different position for the conference. It is, and, and I'm thrilled for, for Barry and I'm thrilled for the Big Ten. And obviously, he's somebody who has incredible institutional history with, with both the Big Ten and, and the University of Wisconsin. I think anybody, anytime you can bring somebody in who uh, has worn the head coaching hat, who has worn uh, an athletic director's hat, who has seen this conference grow and evolve through all that's happened here over the last 20 plus years, it can't help but be an advantage for us. And so I'm thrilled, uh, really wished very well in his retirement, but I'm really happy to see that his retirement was relatively short-lived and that he's back, uh, back with us. I think that'll be to the advantage of, of our entire membership. Jim will talk to us about um, having so many super seniors back, like in 22 and most in the country. And what that says about him to have guys who have played previously for other coaches to commit to him and want to run it back? I, I think it's it's huge, and, and he mentioned this during his opening remarks. I give a lot of credit to Lovey Smith for that as well. And we, we built a strong foundation here. We have guys who uh, care about each other, who care about this place, uh, and that didn't start with Brett Bielema's arrival. That that long preceded him, uh, but but that said, from the minute he walked in the door, he made a priority of connecting with our players on a very personal level. Uh, and, I, and I'm just thrilled that, uh, that they saw in him uh, what I've seen in him. And it's been a, a, a real thrill for me to, to interact with our players. You guys know I've been around them for a long time now. And to see the smiles on their faces, to, to hear how excited they are about things that are happening with our Illinois football program uh, has really been uplifting. And, and I'm, I'm just thrilled for them to have the opportunity. Josh, obviously an emotional day last Friday with Bobby's passing. What, what has this week been like for you and your conversations with the guys? Do you guys have any intent to honor him in some capacity this season? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. And, and obviously our, our hearts uh, were broken last Friday. It was, a, it was a hard day and one that will continue to have, I think, a um, challenge for many of us personally. It's, um, he's somebody that's meant a lot to this place. And I think he will continue to mean a lot to this place even with his passing, uh, it's incumbent on me and on our on our staff to, to find ways to celebrate him, to, to memorialize him, um, not just in the short term, but in the long term. Uh, those conversations are, are started and, and we're starting to figure out what the right way is to, to honor his memory and to make sure that those people who never had the chance to, to be graced by Bobby's presence uh, still know who he was and, and why he was so important to Illinois athletics and to fighting line of football. Um, you know, it's uh, just an absolute tragedy. Um, we are going to take a group of people down to attend his services over the weekend. Uh, obviously, very connected to a lot of people with the football program and with the overall athletic department. And uh, we want to be sure that, uh, that his family understands how grateful we are for the brief time that we have with Bobby and that, uh, that they know that uh, he's somebody that we'll never forget.